Well, we talk about, you know, believing in yourself 100%. And what does that mean, like to believe in yourself 100%? What is that? And if we can trust our, you know, when we, when we can stay in the moment and, and be with this, this moment, we're giving our mind a rest. And each of us, each of us has a beautiful mind, you know, and we were born, and you could have identical twins, you know, and they might be super close and, blah, you know, same background, same upbringing, same DNA, and yet they'll, they'll branch into what, who they are. You know, they, one might be into this, one might be into that. Is there something, you know, some transformation of consciousness that, that nobody can explain? Nobody knows what happens when you die. I mean, literally, I think I heard the Buddha said, if you try to think about those things, you'll go crazy. <laughs> don't think about those things. We don't know. But there's obviously a, a flowering, an opening that happens. And, and, and so if we believe in ourselves, if we have a strong center, we start to trust that, um, oh, you're leaning towards that. Why don't you try that? You know, why don't you try that? Um, when I was in high school, uh, we moved all the time, you know, my, my family. And I, I landed in this high school as a sophomore. And um, turned out we were going to stay there till I graduated. So I was going to have three years in this high school. I didn't know anybody. And I was walking down the hall, and something occurred to me. It said, you know, you can do anything you want. Because I wanted to be popular. <laughs> you know? I wanted to be recognized. I wanted to be somebody instead of always this new kid. You know, or... So I ran for an office just treasurer of the sophomore class. <laughs> I won, you know. I became the treasurer of this. I didn't do anything. We didn't have any money. <laughs> but I was the treasurer, you know. And it was like, it was like, you know, it was some validation that, that you know. So, yeah, that, that's ego. That's my need to be, to be recognized, but also... It's like, well, what are you going to do when you're recognized? What are you going to, what's the point? What's the point? And so that's what I started to get, you know. It's like, what am I? And what's the point of what you're going to do? So then I was leaning towards, you know, going to, uh, I really wanted to be a nurse so badly. I always wanted to be a nurse since I was a little kid. All my friends in, co in high school were going to college. They were just, you know, I was in the popular group, and they were all going, you know, to these good colleges. And all I wanted to do was go to nursing school. I went to this trade school, a you know, three-year diploma program in Washington, D.C. And um, I was so proud of myself. It was like I never even thought about, oh, this one's going to the you know, University of Virginia. This one's going here. This one's going. I never even thought of that. And I was smart. I knew how to, be, how to you know, look good. But I had no interest in that. Because what am I? kept coming up, be a nurse, be a nurse, be a nurse. So anyway, this nursing career turned out to be just what I needed. It, it held hands with Zen practice, completely held hands. It really, any job will hold hands. Zen will hold hands with any career, you know, and it just, so I'm, I'm going to all these, you know, I've been to, I don't know how many young men, John Jins, you know, I used to go to New Haven, New York, um, Cambridge, Providence, and I worked every other weekend, but I do t usually two young men gin gins a month. I go off with Sansanim, we go here, we go there and practice. And I come back on you know, Monday morning, I'd be with a patient and it's kind of like just got embedded, like they're, they're presenting the family, the patient's presenting something. And, and it embedded it became was like, you know, just, I wouldn't do it out loud, but I say, listen to them, you know, just, What's, what's going on? And then, poof, just such a great feeling. And it came, I always, I went, that came from my practice, you know? It came from putting it all down. How is it just now? Don't hold your opinion, your condition, your situation. Act with others. You know, I heard that from Sansanim. He'd give the same Dharma talk every time, practically. <laughs> like, I, don't know. I know I gave him, when we first came, we'd been, you know, we'd, he'd been in the United States a couple of years or something. And I'd read all these books about Zen. And he was um, sitting in the kitchen. He was, like, eating noodles and, and, and reading. 
I said, wait a minute. When you're doing something, just do it. You're supposed to only eat the noodles. Why read and eat the noodles? He goes, yeah, when reading and eating the noodles, only do it. <laughs> he was quick. He was quick. I went, oh, OK, because that's an idea. You know, we have these ideas, oh, if I'm practicing correctly, then I'm doing it this way or that way or this way. Or that. But it's like, trust, believe in yourself. What are you doing just now? And then pay attention. And there's no rules, really. You know, it's the rule, the biggest rule is to, is to listen to your gut, listen to your gut. It knows everything. So if you have to pause, I used to think if you were really clear, you wouldn't have to, you wouldn't make a mistake, you wouldn't have to pause, you'd just be right on track. No, when you're, when you're making a mistake, when you don't, aren't sure, then 100%, you know, see the mistake. Uh, don't do it till you're sure. Like, you, you don't have to know everything. You just have to be real. Just be real, you know. So, you know, you make a mistake, you try to fix it. But... The fact that you made a mistake doesn't mean you're not an authentic Buddha. It's just you learn from your mistake, right?